Well, here we are once again. Good morning to you all. It's uh, it's that time again. It is 9.30 on the West Coast, 9.30 in the morning, which means it's time to put on the brakes, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation because this is Coffee Breaks with Steve. Yes. Well, here we are once again. Good morning. It is Saturday, July 16th, 2022. And uh, broadcasting once again from my home studio in Spokane. Actually, the Millwood, if you know, it's always a little bit confusing when you live in a town within a city or a city within a city. So those of you who are from Oregon, for instance, from the Portland area, say Tigard is an example. Tigard is an individual city, but its postal zip code, it is also considered a Portland address, right? If you live in Tigard, you can claim a Portland address. We live in the city of Millwood in the city of Spokane. So our address, I mean, I technically say we live in Spokane, but I, I say that we live in Spokane. Technically, we live in Millwood. Anyway, wow, definitely need more of this. There is Jay Zetterval. Good morning. And Jerry Zetterval. Jason, good morning. Jerry Thompson. Kim Baker, good morning and happy Catterday. And good afternoon, right? Because you are in a different time zone. Alan McCormick, good morning. Shalan Shepard, good morning. Kathy Garlic, everybody drink. Thank you, Shalan. Missed you when you were busy and weren't able to be here for a couple of the recent uh, episodes of Coffee Breaks with Steve. Well, I hope you have. Hi, Carissa. Yeah, Carissa is here. Carissa is directing. Kathy McCormick. Hi, good morning. If you are just tuning in, do what these other people are doing. Make sure that you say hello in the chat so we know you're here. As we get into our topic today, please make sure that you're part of the conversation. Join the conversation. It's what we're all about. There's a reason why we say put on the brakes, grab a cup of coffee, and join the conversation. It's because I get to talk out loud for 30 minutes straight, but I don't want to talk into a void. You are part of this. We're all sitting around our big coffee table. So be part of the conversation. All right. And I will try to catch people and say hello as I see you signing on here. But uh, so let me talk about some special days this week. And some of you on here are celebrating some special days, which I'll get to in a moment. I want to talk about some other things first. And a lot of these, let's see, are any of these not food I think every one of the days that I have marked here uh, to talk about this week are food related. So get ready. First of all, tomorrow, the 17th, and this always happens on the third Sunday of July. Tomorrow is, hi Carla, tomorrow is National Ice Cream Day. Now, again, these national days supposedly are because of a resolution of some part, type in Congress or a presidential proclamation. I'm not, yeah, Kim Baker, National Ice Cream Month. I would like to think so. Hi, Lila Swafford. Good morning. National Ice Cream Day is always the third Sunday. However, it corresponds this year because July 17th is also Peach Ice Cream Day. Anybody here a peach ice cream fan? To me, I like peach ice cream if it's good peach ice cream. I don't like stuff that is, I don't like any of the fruit ice creams that have that artificial candy flavor to them. If they've got a good fresh flavor, I like them. Um, so yes, yeah, so tomorrow is also peach ice cream day. So you can nationally enjoy your ice cream and have the peach ice cream at the same time. The 18th, Monday. Monday is National Caviar Day, which is interesting that we have a National Caviar Day because caviar is not typically considered an American delicacy. It's a Russian delicacy. I'm wondering how many of you have ever tried caviar, have ever had it. I had it one time. And it was when we were on a cruise a number of years ago. And they had one evening where they had this big buffet set up all around the pool. And they had caviar as part of it. It's the only time I've eaten it. And, you know, caviar, I think it's caviar is one of those things you either like it or you don't like it. I don't think there's anybody who's neutral about caviar. It has a very, it's some, and there are different kinds of caviar made from, because we know what they are, right? Um, 
but they have a they tend to have a very salty flavor you typically see them served on like crackers or something like that mm -hmm. um let's see that, that caviar is a garnish right a line from um you've got mail what's it actually made of Ca caviar is actually made from fish eggs um, and I think it's stir is sturgeon sort of the del the main delicacy for caviar in Russia. I didn't look it up, so you may have to do some research on this. Um, hi, Rick Venturi. Good to see you. But yeah, so th that is Monday. National Caviar Day is Monday. And if you've never had it, I don't know, maybe there are, I'm sure there are places where you can buy it and try it if you'd like to do that. I, I've had it before. I would eat it again if it was on a cruise at a buffet where I didn't have to pay extra for it. I don't think I would pay a bunch of money just to eat caviar. Although I'm one of those people who, if there is something unusual on a menu and I haven't had it before, or it's something that I know is, is just kind of unique. I, I will, I will do that. Um, yeah. Beluga, Jerry Zetterval is mentioning Beluga. And, and I know that is definitely a source of caviar Tuesday. National, there's a couple of things on Tuesday, and I'm not sure if these go together. They just happen to hit on the same day. National Daiquiri Day. Anybody a daiquiri fan? If you have, if you like your cocktails, your mixed drinks, do you like a, a, to have daiquiris? If so, what kind of daiquiri? Because there are different flavors of daiquiri. So I'd be curious to hear about that. And then Tuesday, the 19th, is also National Raspberry Cake Day. Now, again, I didn't look up to see if either of these national days were because Congress declared daiquiris need to have a national day or raspberry cake needs to have a national day, but they are listed in the source that I go to as national days, which could just mean that whoever's pushing them decide to stick that label on there. Um, yeah. And let's see, what else do we have? Okay, so the 20th, Wednesday, is National Ice Cream Soda Day. That's a, that can be good, too. And, you know, we're going into, I think, uh, Kim, you mentioned earlier, um, yeah, you know, let's make it ice cream month, so why not have ice cream sodas along with that? And also, National Hot Dog Day is the 20th. Oh, I do have one thing on here for this week that is not food related, but we have to mention it. The 20th is also what's called Moon Day. I think it's also Space Exploration Day. And the reason that date is chosen is that in 1969, July 20th was when the first men landed on the moon, Apollo 11, uh, Armstrong, Aldrin, Collins landing on the moon. I remember that day. I remember so clearly I was such a fan of the entire space programs, starting with Mercury, going all the way back to Alan Shepard and Gus Grissom and, and John Glenn and their early flights and the, and the uh, original seven astronauts and going through Gemini. And then as everything was building up for the moonshots and then remembering that July 1969, when they actually went to the moon. So that's Moon Day is the 20th. Now getting back to food, the 21st Thursday is National Junk Food Day, as if we haven't already been hitting on that with some of this other stuff. But National Junk Food Day encompasses so many different things, right? So many different kinds of food. Do you have a favorite junk food? What do you include in junk food? Some people's one person's snack is another person's meal. I just coined that phrase and I'll copyright it. But in the meantime, you can use it. Uh, but what do you consider junk food? Junk food for some people is anything that is not an entree or main course or, or a vegetable. For other people, snacking on vegetables might be junk food. I don't know. Um, so I'm curious to see some of your ideas here of what would be included in junk food. I would say one of my junk food <sighs> habits of the past I'm not going to say it was an addiction, but when I was like in, in college age and beyond, Hostess Ding Dongs, I would buy them by the box. You know, I think they came a dozen to a box, probably still do. And I could munch on those chocolate things with the chocolate glaze and marshmallow in the middle. I could munch on those things all day. Even now, I can, I, if I think about it, I can get that taste in my mouth. Yeah, that's to me, that's junk food. Um Let's see. National junk food. Let's see. I'm looking for, yeah, sugar food. Rick says sugar food. Probably, but n not necessarily for everybody. So I'm curious again to anything sweet, carbs. I'm just, little Debbie glazed donut bars, Kim Big. Kim, that's very specific. 
about a junk food, kind of like me with the hostess ding dongs. So you obviously, there's obviously a bit of a story behind the little Debbie glazed donut bars. I think Kim, we may have to have that talk. All right, let's see. Oh, some special personal days today, a couple of special days, just today. Um, I know that, that Shalane is on here. Shalane and, and her husband, Dustin are actually visiting us this weekend. They arrived last night, but today, is their wedding anniversary. So happy anniversary to Shalane and Dustin today. It's also my son-in-law, Jason. I think Jason is on here, I think. I said, yeah, there he is. Jason is here. Happy birthday, Jason. Today is Jason's birthday. Wish him a happy birthday. He is here on uh, Coffee Breaks today. So we want to make sure that we acknowledge that, celebrate with him. And uh, I'm not going to talk about the fact that he's getting to a point in life where he's going to cross a milestone next year. We won't talk about that. And then the 18th of July this month, uh, my cousin Kay Hartley celebrates her birthday on the 18th. I don't see Kay or, or any of her relatives on here. Brenda, her sister, sometimes here. I haven't seen Brenda, but uh, Kay Hartley is celebrating a birthday on the 18th, which is, of course, on Monday. So. Happy special days to all of you. Do you have a special day that you're celebrating this week? If you do and you want us to celebrate with you, put it in the chat right now and so we can celebrate. And if you if you are celebrating something in the remainder of July or going into August and you want to make sure we mention it on Coffee Breaks with Steve, you can private message me or email me or text me if you know how to do any of those things. Let me know and I'll make sure it gets on the list so we can celebrate those special days with you. All right. I, I think we've covered enough junk food and other foods and other special days, but I, I'm going to continue to reach out to uh, any of you with special days today and give you a hard time. Um, ooh, William and Taylor. Okay. William and Taylor turning 10 on Monday. William and Taylor are my nephew's boys, twin boys. And so Kathy putting this up there, Kathy is their grandmother. It says Kathy's son, Nick's, who did I, did I say Nick when I said they're my nephew? My nephew, Nick, is their dad. So Kathy, wow, hang on. You can just tell when I need to go for the coffee. It's just, I, the words, yeah. <laughs> Kathy is Nick's mom. Nick is William and Taylor's dad. And they're celebrating a birthday Monday. So happy birthday to William and Taylor. Kathy, please pass that along on my behalf and on behalf of everyone here. All right, listen, I want to get into today's topic. This one uh, I've been thinking about for a couple of weeks. It was inspired by a couple of things that I saw on Facebook. And you may have seen this. There's a, a video that it was being played all over the news. It has been making the rounds on social media. You can find it. I'm not playing it on here because uh, I want to be careful about things that might be copyrighted. But at the recent commencement ceremonies for Rollins College, one of the valedictorians, the valedictorian who actually gave the talk, and I bring this up here so you can see her, her name is Elizabeth Bonker. And Elizabeth Bonker gave the valedictorian talk at Rollins College. And a couple of unique things about Elizabeth Bonker. And maybe the key one is a couple of unique things probably about Elizabeth and about Rollins College. Elizabeth is on the autism spectrum, was diagnosed at a very young age with autism, and she is nonverbal. Now, I said she gave the commencement speech, and you're seeing a picture of her at the Rollins College commencement podium. She used a speaking machine, a machine that you type in words and it creates a synthetic voice. Because of her autism, because of the issues that it has created for her, she had to basically type that in using one finger and, and little by little put this speech together. It's a lovely speech. You need to find this on YouTube and, and watch it and listen to it and be inspired by the whole thing. I'm going to share a couple of brief passages from it because Rollins College and, and one of the focuses of Elizabeth Bonker's talk was the fact that Rollins College is also the alma mater of Fred Rogers, Mr. Rogers. I think all of us know who Mr. Rogers is. Mr. Rogers graduated from Rollins College in 1951. And there is a quote that is often attributed to Mr. Rogers as having been his quote. And it is one that was very relevant to him 
but he did not actually write the quote. He didn't originate the quote. And the quote that he carried with him on a piece of paper, according to, to legend, reliable sources, he had this slip of paper that he carried in his wallet from the time that he graduated that was a copy of an engraving at Rollins College and one of the buildings that says, life is for service. Life is for service. And if you know anything about Fred Rogers' story, you know that, that his life epitomized service, giving to others, serving others, finding ways to make a difference, finding ways to make an impact. That was, that he dedicated his life to that. And in her talk, uh, Elizabeth Bonker refers to this, and I'll, I'm just quoting one part of her talk. She says, during my freshman year, I remember hearing a story about our favorite alumnus, Mr. Rogers. When he died, a handwritten note was found in his wallet. It said, life is for service. You have probably seen it on the plaque by Strong Hall. Life is for service. So simple, yet so profound. And she goes on to talk about, talking about her own challenges that she's overcome. And so I'm going to read a little bit more. Uh, she says, she talks about the fact that there were many people throughout her life who calling her by a lot of names, not even referring to autism, but other names, which I won't even say here. But she says, she talks about Martin Luther King talking about, I have a dream. She says, there are 31 million non-speakers with autism in the world who are locked in a silent cage. My life will be dedicated to relieving them from suffering in silence and to giving them voices to choose their own way. How's that for passion? How's that for making a commitment? Speaking it out loud in front of not only the, the people at the commencement, but this going out to millions around the world through YouTube and other sources. She goes on to say, what is your dream? How will you use your Rollins education to fulfill your mission? How will you rise up to meet the unprecedented challenges of our time? And she's talking, talking. She says, um, Here's my call to action today. She says it's simple. Tear off a small piece from your commencement program and write life is for service on it. She says, we even gave you pens to really do it. They prepared for this. Let's start a new tradition. Take a photo and post it on social media, then put it in your wallet or some other safe place, just as Mr. Rogers did. And when we see each other at our reunions, we can talk about how our commencement notes reminded us to serve others. She goes on to say, we are all called to serve as an everyday act of humility, as a habit of mind, to see the worth in every person we serve, to strive to follow the example of those who chose to share their last crust of bread, for to whom much is given, much is expected. God gave you a voice, she says, use it. And no, the irony of a non-speaking autistic encouraging you to use your voice is not lost on me. Because if you can see the worth in me, then you can see the worth in everyone you meet. That's just a little bit of her talk. Look it up. Elizabeth Bonker, Rollins College. But I think about Mr. Rogers as an example. And, and, and I'm just wondering, for those of you who have any familiarity, watched Mr. Rogers' program have, are aware of anything, maybe watch some of the, the documentary or the movies made about him. What, what is it, do you think, about Mr. Rogers that stands out? What are the things that stand out that epitomize serving others? Who are the people in your life who you think of when you think of life is for service? Who comes to mind as someone who, in your experience, has lived that, has epitomized that? Those aren't to say, wow, I know someone, I know of someone. It's to say, we have all been influenced by people who have helped to show us that we can make a difference. And with that in mind, we need to think about how that making a difference plays out in our lives. We need to be thinking about how we take the examples that we've had, the mentoring that has been shared with us, the qualities that exist within us and play those out. Um, and, and I've got five things here that I want to relate from my own perspective. This is Life is for Service, according to Steve Glavin on Coffee Breaks with Steve. So take this for what it's worth. I'm not saying that you have to do this. I'm not saying it's the only way to live it out. What I'm saying is these have worked for me. Number one, 
first of all, you have to be true to yourself, your beliefs and your passions, right? If you begin to compromise who you are, if you, if your identity starts to become influenced by what you do, as opposed to what you do being influenced by who you are, you're not going to be able to live a life of service. We're talking about lifestyle, aren't we? So uh, a pastor that of uh, church that we went to in the past used to say, don't get your who from your do, get your do from your who. In other words, don't get your identity from your activities. Make a decision about what you're going to do based on who you are, which means you got to know yourself. To thine own self be true. Second of all, think of others more highly than yourself. All right. You got to start with yourself, but then you got to think beyond yourself and think about the others. Who are the people in your immediate sphere? Who are the family members, the friends? Who are the, who are the people that require a little extra grace, that require a little extra patience? Because if we exclude them, we're not thinking of people more highly than ourselves. Until you include even the people that are tough to include, it's not inclusive. This is a big word. We talk about in inclusivity has become big in our culture. And you can get into all kinds of definitions and cross definitions of that. But the bottom line is you've got to be willing to, if you look at yourself in the mirror, honestly, it becomes much easier to look at other people, honestly, and look beyond some of the things that may grate on you or you don't like or have offended you in the past and think about how you make a difference even in those person's lives. And sometimes it's as simple as being there, as simple as being patient, as simple as giving a kind word of encouragement as opposed to a criticism because of something you don't like. We could go off on that for quite a while. I'm not going to. Third, think beyond your cocoon and your comfort zone. And that kind of goes with the previous one, but it goes beyond that. Because what we're talking about here is you've got to think beyond. Sometimes serving means you've got to do something that's a little bit uncomfortable. Um, Carol often says that I have, my wife Carol, that I have the gift of service. When I have taken some of the personality and spiritual gifting tests that churches provide and other places provide, it comes out that, that I score relatively high on service. But I will admit there are certain things that I enjoy doing in service. There are things that are more of a struggle and a challenge for me because of insecurities, because I don't feel that maybe I'm as good in those areas. Maybe I just don't enjoy them as much. But if we're truly going to give in service, you got to think outside the box. Several years ago, I was working for an organization called Johnny and Friends, founded by Johnny Erickson Tata. If you know who that is, you know who that is. If you don't, you can look her up. Johnny Erickson Tata is a woman with disability. She, at the age of 17, uh, suffered an accident where she broke her neck and became a quadriplegic. And she has devoted the remainder of her life to finding ways to reach out to those with disabilities and families affected by disability to make the world a more inclusive place for them. And one of the things that Johnny and Friends does is they sponsor wheelchair missions to other countries. Wheelchairs are, are used wheelchairs are collected, refurbished, sent to countries. And when I was working in the Bay Area for Johnny and Friends, our country was Thailand that we served out of the Bay Area. And I, I got to go one time to Thailand and my role, I was one of the mechanics. I am not a tool guy, but part of my job was I was working as part of a team, as, as part of the larger team, we were broken out into small teams where I was given instructions by a physical therapist who was measuring people for wheelchairs. And then I had to find the right wheelchair and make adjustments to it to fit them, which sounds pretty simple, but some of them were kind of interesting adjustments and time consuming. That was not my comfort zone. Being in a foreign country in, in Southeast Asia was not in my comfort zone. Did I enjoy it? There were po points that I really enjoyed and there were points that, that were awkward for me that I felt insecure about. And yet I would not exchange that experience for anything. And part of what you learn when you step outside of your comfort zone is you are less insecure for the next time you have to step outside that zone. There are always going to be new experiences. They're always going to come with a certain degree of insecurity, nervousness, stress, tension, anxiety. But we learn that we are stronger and bigger and more capable when we reach out beyond the little cocoon that we exist in. So that was third. Fourth, 
look for the opportunities. Sometimes we go, I'll just wait. When something comes to me, when I see something, I'll, I'll respond to it. How about being proactive and, and looking up and finding out what are the needs in your community? What are the needs in, in the grander community? What are those concentric circles that you build out from? And instead of waiting, kind of, again, that's part of that going outside the cocoon, but it's also being proactive about looking for the opportunities. And I strongly urge that. By the way, any of these things that I'm talking about, they're things that I still work on every single day. I'm not better um, than anybody else out there. In fact, probably not as good at this as some of you. And then fifth, and, and obviously it's where we're going, act. Words can be powerful. Thoughts can be powerful. Action is what makes a difference. And that can come in so many different ways. That can come in so many different ways to make an impact. But if you take those things and kind of think of them in that order, think of them in any order, but you think of the, the things that I outlined and where does that put you? And listen, so that we don't start going, oh boy, I am such an underachiever when it comes to this compared to a Fred Rogers or a Johnny Erickson Tata or even a Steve Glavin. And please don't include me with Fred Rogers or Johnny Erickson Tata. But with anybody that you think of that might have been a mentor, an example for you, do not think of yourself less. The other thing I want you to do is take time now, stop and think about what are the things that you already do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, maybe even occasionally that are those acts of service. And sometimes we're trying to think too big because we think the little things are just a drop in the bucket. A drop in the bucket is the first step to filling up the bucket. We gotta start somewhere. I'm just full of platitudes today, which means it's time to do this. All right, listen, I wanna hear from you. What are the things that you do? And think, I don't wanna toot my own horn. I talked about going to Thailand. I could talk about other things that I do and I try to do. Sometimes it's as simple as I'm serving my wife, Carol. I'm, I may be, maybe it's, I'm fixing something to eat and I'm going to bring her a plate of it. She doesn't even have to ask. I'm, I make the bed before she has to, and she does the same for me. I mean, it's not like we have certain chores and one of us has to do it and the other one ignores it. But every time I do one of those things, I think about, it does occur to me, am I making the day easier for Carol? It's, that's not, I'm not bragging on myself. That's just part of serving. If I'm not starting in that, in the middle of that concentric circle with the person I live with, the person I exist with, we celebrated our 42nd wedding anniversary this week. And part of the reason that I think that we, still love each other, still like each other, still enjoy each other, is because we have never stopped understanding what it means to serve one another, knowing each other's love languages and responding to those things. So uh, I want to hear from you. If not on here, we're going to put some stuff on the round table. I want to know what it is that you do to serve and or what are you going to commit to doing of these five things that we talked about? What are the steps? How are you going to employ those steps and, and do something? All right, listen, we've reached the, we're reaching the end of our time today. And I have platituded to the point that I'm almost out of breath. I'm never completely out of breath. You know that if you tune in. Um, I would say once again that if, um, if you haven't already responded on here, if I haven't said, if I haven't said hi to you, make sure that, that you make some more comments here and I'll try to catch it. I've been trying to look at the camera and look at my notes. And so I, I haven't caught every comment. Shalane, I think, did you put the, um, I see a link up there, Shalane. Is that the link to uh, Elizabeth Bonker's talk at, uh, at Rollins College? Is that what you linked to up there? I hope you did. Um, but whatever you linked to, thanks for doing it. All right, <clears throat> listen. Got some things coming up in the next few weeks, still working on some agenda items, some topics, even some potential guests, getting a little bit smarter because we've had some faux pas with guests in recent weeks where we had people schedule and something came up at the last minute, they couldn't join us. And we're in the process of rescheduling those, got some things on the agenda. I'm gonna be a little bit more cagey here. I'm not gonna talk about which guests are gonna be on, but just let you know, watch for in the next uh, few days, watch for the updates, watch for the invitations to Coffee Breaks with Steve. We will be back next week with another topic, with another fun conversation. I appreciate that you're here. I appreciate that you take the time to be part of the conversation. I appreciate that you take this seriously. And um, listen, I say it every week as we close, 
but I can't think of a more appropriate topic around which to wrap this statement. And, and understand that every week when I say it, it's not simply, I'm not just throwing out a tagline, I mean it. That's why this topic of life is for service is important to me. I, I, I take it seriously and I mean it. So I will just finish today by saying what I say every week and ask that you take this to heart as well. Find a way to make a difference in your world this week. God bless you. Have a great week.